Let us now start discussing one of the most uh, popular areas of uh, mechanism design uh, which is called, uh, called the mechanism design with transfers. This is a domain restriction as we have discussed in the previous uh, two cases uh, but this uh, specific uh, domain restriction gives, gives us the opportunity to use something called a transferable utility. So uh, whenever we call transfers uh, we mean that the utility utility can be transferred uh, the way this transfers uh, uh, the utility can be transferred is what is known as money and this is the first time we are going to use something like a money uh, which is used to transfer utilities from one player to another so uh, let us look at uh, what this social choice function is and how we can uh, design different components uh, of that uh, social choice functions so the first thing is that uh, the social choice function maps this type profile, the, the Cartesian product of all, all these uh, type sets into what is known as script X. So this is what we are going to call the space of all outcomes. Now we have deliberately used this uh, uh, uppercase F to denote the social choice functions because we will be using the lowercase f for a different purpose. So what is this space of all outcomes in this case? The outcome X has two components. The first one uh, is something that we are going to call the allocation and we'll denote it by lowercase a generally and a payment vector so let's say we are going to define that with pi and this gives a payment for each of these players and we'll shortly uh, discuss examples which will give you an idea of what these payments uh, payments mean uh, this is just a real number so you can just imagine that uh, people are uh, each of these agents are given certain amount of real numbers to pay and that is exactly what these transfers are. Uh, this is exactly the, the meaning of money in this context. So what are the examples of allocations? So the uh, allocation could be something like a public decision. So let's say the uh, a municipal corporation is trying to design uh, decide whether to build a bridge, a park or a museum. So in that case this set capital A. So uh, we are going to denote the set of all uh, possible allocations in a specific uh, setup, a mechanism design setup with this uh, with the notation capital A. So all this lowercase a lives in that and this uh, in this example could be park, bridge and so on. Similarly the allocation could be uh, that of a divisible good. So for instance a spectrum, uh, a, this is a divisible good and uh, this can be shared among different uh, players. So if, uh, if in that case we uh, define this A as a, uh, as a vector of a, A1 to AN where each of these AIs are nothing but uh, some real number between this interval 0 and 1 and together they, uh, they make equal to 1. So that means the spectrum, the, uh, the entire spectrum is, uh, is of uh, unit size and each of these agents are getting some fraction of that spectrum. That is what an allocation in this case means. Or you can uh, also think about a single indivisible object allocation. So far we have discussed only divisible allocations, uh, the, the previous e example. But let's say it is indivisible. So either you will have to give the whole object uh, to, to someone or you cannot uh, uh, give that object at all to an agent. So in that case the vector remains the same. The only difference becomes is that uh, this AIs can take integral values either 0 or 1. and as usual the, the sum of this uh, uh, AIs should be less than or equal to 1 so which also keeps the opportunity that this item might not be uh, allocated at all. And uh, the fourth example is that you can partition mar multiple indivisible objects instead of a single indivisible object there could be multiple uh, indivisible objects. So let's say S is the set of all such objects so maybe a phone, a mobile phone, a laptop and so on. All these things are uh, um, uh, all indivisible objects. Now you, you are planning to partition this um, indivisible objects among n players. So what will be the set of uh, all alternatives in that case? This, this will be something like a uh, partition. So what is a partition? Uh, 
so let us look at uh, the sets a1 to an so these are the sets uh, the the subset of this indivisible objects that goes to uh, the corresponding player so ai is the subset of these objects that goes to player i uh, each of these uh, sets are disjoint uh, so uh, none of them have any common item among that uh, among them uh, that is because the either agent i if agent i gets it then agent j won't be able to get that okay so that's uh, so uh, the collection of all such uh, uh, partitions of the whole set uh, is going going to constitute the set of all possible allocations in this context so you can already see that uh, in different examples or different contexts there are different kinds of uh, allocation uh, allocation uh, sets and also the uh, possible allocations now we are going to define the uh, the type of an agent i uh, with this lowercase theta i which belongs to capital theta i so this uh, this is a little more abstract in, in uh, at the current setup but um, uh, we are going to discuss what is the meaning of this private information or this or this type of an agent so we are going to assume that this type is a private information and that is something that will bring us to this uh, uh, to this idea of truthfulness or incentive compatibility that we have discussed now how are we uh, going to define the benefit of an agent so uh, uh, here we are trying to design the incentives for this uh, agents we'll have to model uh, uh, that benefit component that if an agent has a specific type and a specific uh, allocation decision has been taken then how much satisfaction or happiness that this agent gets and that is captured using uh, something called the valuation function so what is this function so if you pick a specific alternative uh, a specific uh, allocation that we have discussed in the in the previous examples and that agent has a specific type so uh, consider vi takes as an input the, the allocation a and the theta i of that player then this particular number is a real number uh, which we are going to call the valuation of that agent for this particular allocation and the type theta i uh, and that is uh, uh, denoting that how much satisfaction or benefit that this agent is getting uh, when this particular allocation is chosen and its type is theta i so in this case uh, as we have uh, as we have discussed long uh, before in the beginning of uh, mechanism design um, that theta i so this valuation is only dependent on the type of that agent alone and not on the types of other agents and this is exactly what is known as the independent private values and we will be discussing only independent private values in this course so um, let us look at an example so um, uh, to give you a, a kind of a feeling of what these types mean so maybe an agent i can be a environment saver so let's say uh, it cares about the environment a lot so that particular information is its private information and that is uh, captured by this theta i environment so that's the type of this player and if the um, uh, alternatives the allocations can be either to uh, build a bridge or build a park then possibly its uh, valuation for uh, for bridge is less than the valuation when uh, uh, the park is chosen because park is more environment friendly so therefore that is a better choice for this particular player when its type is uh, theta i environment so environment saver but if its type changes to let's say business friendly so or transportation friendly so in that case uh, depending on its type uh, maybe now building a bridge is better than building a park so that is uh, how we are going to uh, look at it that's one way of capturing it uh, uh, depending on the context how we are uh, addressing a specific or modeling uh, a mechanism design problem into this mechanism design with transfer setup uh, the type will change and will define that accordingly let us now come to the payment part so what is payment now so uh, we have defined this this pi i's uh, which is the payment for player payment charge to player i uh, that uh, lives in the real uh, lives on the real line and the payment vector is given by this pi 1 to pi n the vector of pi 1 to pi n now 
so with this payment as as well as the allocation and it players type we can define the complete utility of this player i so uh, the utility of this player i when its type is theta i and has an outcome so remember that this uh, allocation and the the payment together constitutes the total uh, outcome so uh, a comma pi is something that we are going to call so this is uh, this is same as x that we have defined in the beginning so here x belongs to that script x so our social choice function was outputting this uh, 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 this this outcome and that is essentially the allocation and the payment decision so utility of player i when this particular uh, outcome is chosen and its type is theta i it is given by the the corresponding two functions so we have already defined this valuation function which is just dependent on the first component of that outcome only the allocation component and the second part is just uh, the the payment itself this is the second component of that decision of that outcome and you can already begin to see that uh, um, this uh, function this uh, utility function has a uh, has a form which we are going to call quasi linear so quasi linear meaning that it could be uh, so it could potentially be non linear in the in the allocation component uh, the outcome has two components allocation and payment it could be possibly non linear in the allocation component but it is linear in the payment component and that is why the name quasi linear comes in so notice that even in mechanisms with money uh, the the utility is uh, not necessarily have to be quasi linear but quasi linear is something which is very natural you can think of uh, it as as if uh, you are getting a specific object let's say you are buying a certain uh, uh, certain painting or or, a, or an object uh, electronic equipment and you have a certain valuation for it and the payment that you are making uh, that is pi i and the difference is is your net utility and this uh, particular quasi linear modeling of the utility uh, fits in a lot of examples and that's why uh, this uh, quasi linear model is quite popular now let us uh, think about so we are going to talk about uh, mechanism design with transfers and the transfers has this and the utilities are uh, of quasi linear form now why is this quasi linear payoff a domain restriction so we have already spoken that why uh, so in the in the case of uh, single pick preferences or even in the uh, in the uniform rule that is a task allocation domain we have uh, uh, we have talked about why uh, that essentially restricts the domain now we will also have to argue why this is a uh, this is a domain restriction so for that let us consider two alternatives so let's say a pi and a pi prime and all that uh, uh, changes so you see that the allocation component does not change in these two uh, in these two alternatives uh, so this is let's say x1 the first outcome and x2 in both these uh, outcomes the allocation component remains the same all that changes is uh, the payment component and for uh, uh, focus on player i and consider that this pi i prime is strictly less than pi pi i so then what what you can see automatically is that no matter whatever kind of uh, uh, utility uh, you choose so let's say we are cho choosing a specific utility uh, the, the quasi linear utility where um, uh, the uh, the valuation function you can choose an arbitrary valuation function but as as soon as you uh, put the corresponding outcome so utility of uh, uh, at the at the outcome x1 which is a comma pi i um, is going to be this one according to the quasi linear payoff and uh, that in the uh, x2 the outcome um, x2 will be given by this and we can already see that because this allocation is the same in both this uh, both these outcomes the first component of this uh, uh, first component of this utility function remains the same for both these cases and because pi i prime is strictly less than pi uh, uh, pi i uh, so then this inequality will always hold so player i will always uh, prefer uh, this x2 so let's say yeah so this was x2 
so uh, player i will always prefer x2 over x1 and there is no way uh, no um, uh, instance uh, or uh, no choice of valuations uh, where uh, x1 will be more preferred than x2 no matter whichever kind of uh, uh, preference uh, whichever kind of uh, valuation function that you can choose so this is a domain restriction because uh, yeah, what we have assumed that uh, uh, in the in the unrestricted domain that if you give me any two alternatives uh, i can always come up with a my, my preference uh, ordering where both this uh, x1 be, uh, above x2 and x2 above x1 is feasible and uh, that is not the case in uh, in this uh, domain no matter whatever way you de design the uh, the utilities x1 will always be worse than x2 for for player i and that is certainly a domain restriction even though this uh, domain restriction is pretty simple and the point is very subtle uh, this actually opens up an opportunity for a lot of social choice functions to satisfy interesting properties and that is what we are going to uh, do in the uh, next uh, few lectures in, in fact till the end of this uh, in this course